Welcome to the Folktale Project, this is Dan Shaws. And today we have the third and final part in the story of Snow White and Rose Red. Shortly after this, Snow White and Rose Red went out to get a dish of fish. As they approached the stream, they saw something which looked like an enormous grasshopper springing towards the water as if it were going to jump in. They ran forward and recognized their old friend, the dwarf. Where are you going to? asked Rose Red. You're surely not going to jump into the water. I'm not such a fool, screamed the dwarf. Don't you see that cursed fish is trying to drag me in? The little man had been sitting on the bank fishing when, unfortunately, the wind had entangled his beard in the line and when, immediately afterwards, a big fish bit. The feeble little creature had no strength to pull it out. The fish had the upper fin and dragged the dwarf towards him. He clung on with all his might to every rush and blade of grass, but it didn't help him much. He had to follow every movement of the fish and was in great danger of being drawn into the water. The girls came up just at the right moment, held him firm, and did all they could to disentangle his beard from the line, but in vain. Beard and line were in a hopeless muddle. Nothing remained but to produce the scissors and cut the beard, by which a small part of it was sacrificed. When the dwarf perceived what they were about, he yelled to them, do you call that manners you told stools to disfigure a fellow's face? It wasn't enough that you shortened my beard before, but you must now needs cut off the best bit of it? I can't appear like this before my own people. I wish you'd been at Jericho first. Then he fetched a sack of pearls that lay among the rushes, and without saying another word, he dragged it away and disappeared behind a stone. It happened that soon after this, the mother sent the two girls to the town to buy needles, thread, laces, and ribbon. Their road led over a heath, where huge boulders of rock lay scattered here and there. While trudging along, they saw a big bird hovering in the air, circling slowly above them, but always descending lower, till at last it settled on a rock not far from them. Immediately afterwards, they heard a sharp, piercing cry. They ran forward and saw with horror that the eagle had pounced on their old friend the dwarf and was about to carry him off. The tender-hearted children seized a hold of the little man and struggled so long with the bird that at last he let go his prey. When the dwarf had recovered from the first shock, he screamed in his screeching voice, Couldn't you have treated me more carefully? You have torn my thin little coat all to shreds, useless, awkward hussies that you are. Then he took a bag of precious stones and vanished under the rocks into his cave. The girls were accustomed to his ingratitude and went on their way and did their business in town. On the way home, as they were again passing the heath, they surprised the dwarf pouring out his precious stones on an open space, for he had thought no one would pass by at so late an hour. The evening sun shone on the glittering stones, and they glanced and gleamed so beautifully that the children stood still and gazed on them. What are you standing there gaping for? screamed the dwarf, and his ashen gray face became scarlet with rage. He was about to go off with these angry words, when a sudden growl was heard and a black bear trotted out of the wood. The dwarf jumped up in a great fright, but he hadn't time to reach his place of retreat, for the bear was already close to him. Then he cried in terror, Dear Mr. Bear, spare me. I'll give you all my treasure. Look at those beautiful precious stones lying there. Spare my life. What pleasure would you get from a poor feeble fellow like me? You won't feel me between your teeth. There, lay hold of these two wicked girls. They'll be a tender morsel for you, as fat as young quails. Eat them up for heaven's sake. But the bear, paying no attention to his words, gave the evil little creature one blow with his paw, and he never moved again. The girls had run away, but the bear called after them, Snow White and Rose Red, don't be afraid. Wait, and I'll come with you. They recognized his voice and stood still. And when the bear was quite close to them, his skin suddenly fell off. And a beautiful man stood beside them, all dressed in gold. I am a king's son, he said, and have been doomed by that unholy little dwarf who had stolen my treasure to roam about the woods as a wild bear till his death should set me free. Now he has got a well-merited punishment. Snow White married him, and Rose Red, his brother, and they divided the great treasure of the dwarf and collected in his cave between them. 
The old mother lived for many years peacefully with her children, and she carried the two rose trees with her, and they stood in front of her window, and every year they bore the finest red and white roses. And that is the end of Snow White and Rose Red. A love story, it turns out, starring an angry little dwarf who really, I mean, he started the whole thing. And then he continued to insult the girls, then tried to sick a bear on them. So in the end, we don't feel terribly bad that he is gone. This is Dan Scholes for The Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Threads and Instagram at Folktale Project. And you can find us wherever you like to listen to your podcasts. As always, thank you so much for listening.